With the Special 29, Canyon's brought big wheels to the much loved Special platform. But that's not all. This bike also gets an updated, more progressive geometry and a handful of neat features to make the mechanic's life that bit easier. Hi, I'm Liv from Off Road CC, and this is the review of the Canyon Special 29 CF8. But as always, before we get on with the review, don't forget to like and subscribe. So the Spectra 29 comes in four different models, and that includes two builds with RockShox suspension and two with Fox. The ones with RockShox get 150mm travel at both ends, and that follows the all-rounder build. And then there's the Shred build, which gets the Fox suspension with 160mm travel up front, with slacker geometry, fat extensions, and a piggyback shock. So the Spectral 29 CF8 that we've got here is one of those Shred models, and it will set you back £4,359. Here's what you'll get for the money. So kicking off with the bike's frame, it's full carbon and it's very tidy thanks to Canyon's clever cable routing, which goes in through the head tube and out through the chainstay. That means there's no excess cable around the bottom bracket flapping around, free for potential damage. Then this bike is sorted with replaceable threaded inserts at the pivot points. So that means if you mangle one of them, all you'll have to do is replace an insert rather than the whole bike frame. On the subject of inserts, this bike then gets a flip chip, which alters the angles by half a degree and gives you 8mm of bottom bracket height adjustment. For the sake of this test, I kept it in the low setting. Other cool bits on the frame is that there's a threaded bottom bracket, bottle cage bosses in the front triangle, and there's a boss underneath the top tube for accessories. There's also a chain guide and a smart, tallest rear axle. Moving on to the spec, this bike comes well and truly sorted from Fox. Handling the front 160mm suspension is a Fox 36 Performance Elite with a top end Grip 2 damper. Handling the rear 150mm is a Fox DPX2 Performance Elite with the Evol Aircan. The Fox 36 Performance Elite is a mighty impressive fork. Its small bump sensitivity is truly excellent and it's nice and supportive as it reaches its mid stroke. And thanks to the Grip 2 damper, it's got all of the adjustment you'd ever want, with low and high speed compression adjustment and high and low speed rebound adjustment. Though I have found it to be a little bit noisy in the Fox's previous offerings, but I reckon that adds to the experience. You've got the sound of your tyres ripping up the ground, the sound of your suspension working its way through the bumps, and you've got the sound of that free hub buzzing away. At the rear, this bike gets Canyon's triple phase suspension kinematic, and that was first found on the Sender downhill rig. When setting up the suspension, I found that I had to put quite a lot more pressure into the shock than I usually would. So if you're a heavy rider, this is something you might have to bear in mind. But once it was set up, the triple phase uh, kinematic really came clear. Just sat on the bike, you can feel how soft it is around the sag point. If you put a bit more effort into the saddle, it really ramps up in its mid-stroke. All of that translates into a super supportive rear end and that's especially noticeable in the corners because this bike just doesn't wallow. Then it takes a special effort to reach bottom out and when you do, it's very rarely harsh. As for the drivetrain, this bike gets Shimano's XT group set with crisp 12-speed shifting and four-pop brake calipers at either end. Those brakes get a tallest reach adjustment, a free-stroke adjustment, and this bike has thinned brake pads to keep things extra cool. Thanks to those four-pot calipers, the XT brakes offer more than enough braking power, and that's incredibly comforting, especially considering the speeds that this bike encourages. The Special 29 CF8 rolls on a pair of DT Swiss XM 1700 wheels, and they're wrapped with Max's rubber in the form of a Minion DHF at the front and a DHR2 at the rear. They come in 2.4 inch widths with XO casings. It's so far so good with these rims. They're reasonably light at 1,848 grams, and they've remained perfectly true even after months of serious riding. The Max's tyre combo that you find on this bike is one that you'll find on loads of bikes out there, and that's for very good reason. They provide dependable grip over a range of conditions, only really getting screwy when it's really wet. However, I did find the DHR2 at the rear to be a little bit lock-up happy when it was seriously dry. And it's not the best rolling tyre out there, but it's definitely not terrible. Then finishing off the cockpit, it comes from Canyon with a 180mm G5 bar paired with a 40mm G5 stem. Then there's the Canyon Iridium dropper post with a 150mm drop on this medium frame. There's nothing to complain about with a CF8 spec, though I did find the drop post lacking in quality a little bit when compared to the rest of the components on this bike. Don't get me wrong, it's a perfectly reliable dropper post and it's commonplace to find an own brand post on bikes with this price, but it's just not quite sophisticated as more expensive posts. 
Now onto the ride. And good for the Canyon Spectral 29 CF8, the ride is mighty impressive. The triple phase suspension kinematic plays a large role in keeping the rear suspension well behaved when you're pedaling back up a hill. And when it's paired with a 14.4 kilogram claimed weight, it results in a sprightly pedaler that not only gets you up the hill quickly, but it helps you keep enough in the tank for another go. Then the 76.5 degree seat tube angle only adds to this bike's climbing prowess. It places right away at an efficient and a comfortable place over the pedals without feeling too fast forwards on the bike. And that means that when you're faced with uphill tech, your weight is nicely balanced, making life much easier. However, the slack 64.5 degree head tube angle does introduce a bit of wobble when you're climbing, but that's nothing that a bit of time with the bike won't fix. But pointing the bike downhill in that head angle makes a lot more sense. It pushes the front wheel further in front of you, which inspires tons of confidence. It also helps the bike lean into corners and it is super stable as you rail yourself around. The combination of the head tube angle, the low bottom bracket and the 1222mm wheelbase has got me hitting corners with so much more speed and confidence. So much so that I don't feel the need to dab the brakes on certain corners while I would on other bikes. While the Spectral 29's 460mm reach is a little bit shorter than what I'm used to, the slack head angle definitely makes up for it. It puts the front wheel at a good place in front of you that adds loads of support on the steeps. On the steeps is where you'll also find the support of the fork really helpful. The front end is always very propped up. So there's an awful lot to like about this bike's geometry, but I did find one very small niggle, and that is that the head tube is just a little bit too tall. This means that I wasn't able to weight the front end in the corners as I'd usually like to, but with the rest of the bike being so well put together, it's a very nice and happy compromise. But if you're like me and you like to size up, that head tube becomes more of a problem because on a large frame it's 10 mil taller. That means you'll have more difficulty weighting the front properly. With that out of the way, let's get back to the good stuff. And the triple phase suspension kinematic really comes to life on the downhills. Because it's so progressive, it, the Spectral 29 is quite a lively ride, but can also cope rather well with big hits. Although, those who are looking to monster truck over the chunkiest of terrain may need to look elsewhere, as the Spectral 29 is better suited to those who like a more precise ride than those who like to pick their lines. Unfortunately, the Spectral 29 CF8 doesn't quite carry the excellent value that we're used to seeing from Canyon. It's by no means bad, but competition's definitely getting stiff, especially from other direct consumer brands. For example, there's YT Industries' Jesse Core 4, which will set you back £4,500. That bike gets Fox factory suspension front and rear, as well as a Renthal cockpit. However, its geometry isn't quite as progressive, with shorter reach and steeper angles. Along with the Jesse, there's the Cube Stereo 150C62 SL29, and that'll set you back £4,300. That gets Fox factory suspension front and rear, along with a Shimano XG drivetrain with a Shimano Dior cassette. That bike then gets a race face cockpit. In terms of kit, the Cube trumps both the Spectral and the Jesse, but its geometry is much more conservative. For starters, it gets a 437mm reach. While both of those bikes offer nicer kit for the money, what the Spectral 29 CF8 lacks in kit it makes up for with its progressive geometry and that triple phase suspension. It's a capable bike that's incredibly confidence inspiring and it's super addictive. Its performance downhill is very flattering and the solid pedaling platform aces you on to go back up the hill for one more accelerating run back down. Although its value for money isn't as mind-blowingly awesome as what we've seen from Canyons of the past, it's a ride that's stuck in my head since I first swung a leg over the bike. So that is a review of the Canyon Special 29 CF8. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have a Canyon, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you'd like to see the written review of this bike, head on over to www.off.road.cc. Thanks very much for watching.